Hello again. Okay. Oh, I need I need to put the charger on for my computers. <laughs> Just a sec. Yeah, so we start again. Okay. okay, so Kelly, yes, you were saying, please carry on. Okay, so uh, David Wolosoga said, uh, the people in the community of Bristol has been uh, climbing for the removal of that statue for a long, long time. And they haven't been heard. And the statues are there as symbol that tells people from there above, above all, above everyone, that, oh, here there was a man or a woman who did all the good and benefit for our people. So when people, and that's not true, that's what he said, that guy was a slave trader, that guy was a murderer. And that's it, that summarizes. I was very happy when the statue was teared down, thrown on the river, because that's a representation of the spirit of the murder and the enslaved, of the enslaver, slave trader that was drawn in the river. And that has to be done. Remember what I said at the beginning of the, 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 the call, the, the talk, that from many African people and from many other, in other religions, symbols of power objects they carry spirits within them so that means that symbology brings their voice above the people and it is still giving the message so it's still the murder saying that and i in person i met people from the community who are historians and guides from the community in bristol who told me kelly we've been fighting and struggling to have representation in this city so please is go to this museum, visit that statue. They will tell you the story of black people. I had a coffee with different people, like Arpita did in London with me, and how much I learned with them. And then uh, when I visited the the bridge of dedicated to Pedro, who was a servant as a slave owner, he was adopted by a slave owner, and there is the Georgian House Museum in uh, also in Bristol, uh, I couldn't find the memorial dedicated to Pedro, who was the black guy, but the statue for Colston was there, erected. So we need to tear them down. I wanted bl that black people here in Brazil were more brave to start tearing our statues down of those who sent black people to the war, which is slavery. So that's it, sorry, sometimes I get very, enraged by that so i hope you guys help me too thank you kelly bye bye you guys yeah i agree with you kelly i think that those statues should go i just uh, was reading about that earlier on today uh it would be interesting i think it's interesting to keep the statues but not outside uh, to keep them in a museum, an open air museum, or anything like that, where the history is told about what these people did, you know, Change not just the sign. exactly, yeah. So not if just... they had dialogued with the people, 
they could probably get into agreement, but no, they just removed all the requests and claims of black people in Bristol and they do that everywhere. So mm -hmm. they then have to react, fight back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think actually okay. the, the problem is not, you know, when we go deep in this, people will see like a sort of uh, revolution or a sort of eager or whatever. It's, uh, we have a little bit of eager, but the thing is for a long time, it's about like, I don't know how many years now people are trying to, to remove all those things. Uh, if every government tried actually to understand the requests of people, it's not only about black people, okay? It's about the history. It's about humanity. Because when you, when you take people, uh, you, you, you have a statue of somebody who, who killed, okay? Somebody who raped, somebody who kidnapped. And then uh, people are demonstrating and saying, you know what, this is not fair. This guy killed a lot of people, so it's not fair for, it's like for the victims, the descendant of those victims, they'll be seeing the statue is the representation of the honor. You don't make a statue for like, I don't know, if you, if you choose to make a statue to represent somebody, is you're giving honor to the person. So you are putting a, a, a murderer at the, at the level that even higher than people who are the victims. This is why I don't know if it's so, if it's really complicated to understand actually. So this is not fair. Those people have no place in the society. We don't, we're not denying their existence, they existed. But the truth about their life is what people need to know. So you put a statue, it's like just, you know, just uh, mocking actually uh, those who came, who are the descendant of those people. And not it, on, only the descendant. I, I say that it's like an insult to the, the knowledge of people. It's an insult to even, I would say, to British people, because they are insulted in intelligence by putting a statue of somebody who is there, and they want those British to accept what is told about the guy. He's insulting their intelligence. So we need just to put things at their places. He existed, he made something, he became rich through the slave trade, where people were, uh, people were killed and whatever. So this is what it is. It's not because most of those people get rich and they, they finance the church. The, uh, uh, they give their money to some caritative uh, associations. They have like orphanage, uh, orphanage or whatever that we have to praise them. No, they give money to some orphanage, but we have millions of people who shed their blood for that. So this is something that needed to be put like just on the public space. We talk about it because it's for our good, for the good also of, uh, for our generations, right? So I don't know why it's so difficult to, and you know, we give more value. And Kelly said that to the life of people who are already dead. And we don't care about those who are alive. What are we leaving to our, our next generation? So we, we are telling our children, praise this guy who is a killer. No, it doesn't make sense. We're educating our children to be good people. We're educating our children to respect humanity, to respect humanism. But we are putting the statue of people above our children, those people whose morality is to be questioned. So this is the thing actually uh, regarding those statues. So it was like, um, I don't know, it's, um, it's very sad to come to this point, to come to the vandalization of the statues, you know, it's just because the debate was refused. Government refused the debate and now, yeah. And I'm very happy uh, that this protest, hmm, the one we from 23rd May now, that we're having all over the world. I'm very happy for the protest because uh, if these protests were made only by black people, of course, the, uh, the looters, those guys, this is what we say, they have no respect for anything. They don't respect our country, they don't respect our flag. They are this and this. 
Unfortunately, it's not. And I will take the example of Portugal. Somebody asked this question, if there were any demonstration here, yes. And for the first time, the streets of Lisbon were full of a mix, not only black people. We were not only there because we are black, because we are denouncing racism. And you know, when you always do it, they say, we always play the victims. Instead of going and do some work, you always hear you play the victims. And for a little thing, you say, yeah, uh, racism, racism in Portugal. But that's, that was not the point last time. There was a mix of people, black, white, gypsies. Everybody was there last time. And this shows that actually there is a new conscience. So this conscience that they try actually to, uh, to dominate for a long time is raising up now. So actually, this, is, this may be a danger for them. They need to think twice and try actually to create something better and give everything. If you talk about the history, the way it was, we, we, we are all fair, we're all quiet, and everybody will know about it. And that's all, that's all. So yeah, that's my point. Thank you so much, Naki. And it's so, um, it's so encouraging to hear that. I, I've been following that and seeing that there were thousands of people all over. It was in Porto, it was in Coimbra, it was in Lisbon. And uh, yes, I did, see, I did see a lot of white people there. And um, I don't know if you, if you have the information, if they were mainly younger people or, or not, because I couldn't get that. If there's a change of, in generations or if there was a mix of ages as well. Okay. Um, yeah, it was a big mix. Okay, it was a big. We we saw for the first time even uh, public figures that came. Yeah, we saw journalists that came and uh, they were in front of the the movement. Uh, and we, we we saw like it was also one of the first time when we have a lot of associations that accepted to be together for one cause. That was amazing. So even a few days before, uh, before the demonstration, um, I was talking with one of the, uh, I, I would say, um, uh, Mamadou Ba, who is uh, the responsible of uh, SOS racism. And I was asking him, so what's the program? What's the plan now? Because uh, we should, uh, if he, know, uh, he knows about something that's been organized, and he was telling me, yeah, there are different things. And I said, I think the best thing is to come all together. Unfortunately, this is what is made. So we came together in one, one protest because there were like a protest on, on Friday. People planned to go to the US embassy. And then there was a protest, um, a gathering uh, next to a garden in La Meda. There was also another one I don't remember where. So there were like three different demonstrations that was spread in two days or two or three days. So it doesn't make sense to, to do that. Unfortunately, every, everybody came together in one protest from children, families. I don't know, I can't really, everybody was there last time. Everybody was there and it's now, okay. But you know, you still have comments, people who uh, um, treating demonstrators to be like, uh, well, <laughs> bandidos, as you say in Portuguese. Uh, bandidos, bandits, vandals. Vandals, something like that, yeah. So that, <laughs> so it's funny, but at least this time it's not like saying, yeah, those black people are bandidos. Yeah, they are, they are okay, I'm sorry to say that they are insulting their own children, right? So, uh, but it's just because their children are getting more conscious about the realities and a lot of them having black friends, gypsy friends, but unfortunately at home, uh, this is not the education that is given to them. They have to hate those people outside, but at, at least for the first time, they came all together from every age, any age, any background. And that was, uh, that was awesome. I would say awesome and hopefully, uh, we, we, we continue doing uh, these sort of things or maybe we won't come back anymore for any protest because things will be, will be soft. So hopefully, <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Um, yeah, it is. It is so hard, uplifting to hear. You know that changes are on their way, and we 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 have to hope. Yeah, <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> But yeah, we cannot, you know, I've been a, an activist for different causes for many years. And, um, and uh, you know, in my moments when I was a bit, you know, getting crazy about it, I had a colleague who said to me, look, you, we have to look to, at what is done. Okay, we have to look at what we are managing to change. Don't look at the whole picture and all the horrible things happening, but just look at what we are managing to achieve each day, each week, each year. And I never forgot that, you know, that was ages ago. Uh, but um, it was another fight. It's another one of my fights. <laughs> um, but I never forgot that. And I think it applies to all causes. We, we really have to keep in perspective um, that things change and things are changing, hope, you know, thankfully. Um, yeah, and we need to keep positive with that. Was there any other um, questions that we haven't answered yet before we move on? I'm just trying to see here. If there was someone else wanting to ask something, please unmute yourself and go ahead. No, everything has been asked so far. Okay, so I have one more question for Kelly, uh, which is, um, you've done, you've been in, in Naki Stool, uh, and uh, you, you know yours as well, of course. So, what are the common points and what are the differences? Okay, I think the common points, uh, uh, they were uh, like the, how we align our histories together as uh, being Afrocentric and representing the diaspora, the things that we have in common are the same struggles, the same issues. And by navigating through the streets of Portugal, anytime I saw icons of the history was all related to the navigators and to the white people. If it wasn't for Naki, I wouldn't have that part of the story. So the same thing happens here in Brazil. If you find the guides who wants to tell you different perspectives, so then you should look for the ones who will guide with a purpose. And for, for example, the Afrocentric guides, they look at offer different experiences uh, from history to entertainment, but they will show you from a perspective of reality, not only of object, objectification of people or of things and cultural assets as commodities, but as assets of soul to be lived and shared. And that's make, that makes a, dif a big difference. It's what Naki uh, brought up now at all and what we have in common and what I've been finding now with our network of guides. Thank you, thank you very much. Do you have any questions following what Kelly just said, any of the participants? No, no okay. questions. Um, I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> um, yes, now I remember. Yeah, I would like to ask you um, if there's what is the thing that touched you most from what you heard tonight? Uh, anything that you'll take from here, um, you know, that will keep you motivated to fight against racism, um, something that you, you took from, from this moment we spent together. If any one of you wants to share, unmute yourself, please. You're shy. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Come on, Elisa. <laughs> So I wanted to thank Naki again and Kelly again. Oh, I know Kelly personally, and um, I haven't been on any of the two yet, but I will definitely go when I be back to Brazil and Naki definitely all see me in Lisbon. Um, so I really, when I, what I like is that comment, that, I mean, the fact is that you Naki do with your um, participants. So the fact of you, you are asking them to express themselves, and I think it's something really, really nice in terms of they really feel 
make them feel like a protagonist of the tour as well, I think is important. And also the idea of sharing you in the practice of asking them to express themselves, they have the opportunity to, to meet the others and to meet other um, stories. And I think that is a great, of a great value. And then I really like that, uh, that aspect. And uh, of course, all the idea of time traveling and through um, the imagination, in your case more in, this, um, in Lisbon, because in Lisbon there is a lot of bits that are not there. So I understand how important is your work there. So I, that work with the imagination, I think, is really important as well. And uh, Kelly, I see and um, feel that through the object, uh, the, the story, that is like really powerful. So I, in different way, I think you, it brings a lot, uh, you bring a lot to, to lives to people's life uh, so well anyway it just, was just a thank comment you. and uh, something that actually i i experienced while you listen to you so thank you for sharing and uh just make me want to go there now really straight so hopefully because <laughs> we will lift soon and then we can uh, meet there in person again so um, thank you very much traveling through stories and through history to meet people actually i want to yeah, finish with that. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Elisa. Maybe we'll go together to, yes. you're, you're now in Britain, so maybe we'll go together for to Lisbon is the closest one. Absolutely, yeah. It sounds easier than going to Brazil for yeah. now. <laughs> At the moment. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Any, anyone else would like to share something? Any thoughts or any feelings or? <laughs> no? Yeah, Barbara, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, sorry, I don't have uh, I don't have my camera on. I don't have a, a camera on my my laptop is broken. Uh, but I'm I'm really happy to hear that these stories are being told. A few years ago, I did some work for the Inter American Development Bank in Salvador de Bahia for three months, and um, I um, I wrote a report on how to include what we put in speech mark the poor which is a euphemism for uh you know for afro descendants and the darker skin colored afro descendants which are always the one that don't make any money um so the study was about making proposals on how to include them into the tourism value chain and of course one of the things i, I specialize in uh, teaching people how to create experiences so one of my recommendations was to actually uh, teach the, the the hidden history of Salvador de Bahia because it was quite incredible for for me to come to a to a place that is that that is Africa in in Brazil and to not have anything telling me the story of Africa in Brazil. Um, so um, so I don't know if it is uh, being, I, I know they actually are implementing the uh, the report. Normally it goes into a draw, so it's nice that they're doing something about it. And I don't know if those stories are being told now. But um, yeah, I just wanted to, um, I'm, I'm rejoicing at the fact and at hearing that, um, that stories are now being uh, told, you know, from, um, from the other side, from the point of view of, uh, not only from the point of view of the of the winners, yes, but uh, from from the point of view of of, um, of those who uh, who experienced uh, another another history or another her story, which is another another issue. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so. I, I hope you enjoyed this moment we spent together. Um, I'm very honored to have you all here. It was a pleasure. Uh, it was uh, for me an excellent evening spent with you all. Um, and um, if you would like to, uh, to be informed of uh, other events that, would, that we will be organizing, we'll probably organize one in Portuguese soon um other events with the subject with another subject uh just drop your emails uh in the chat box and we'll, we'll be able to contact you later um we would like to finish with um other extracts of the poem that we started uh this uh this event with 
Um, so I'm going to, I'm just going to, yeah, to ask Naki and uh, Kelly to um, to finish uh, to finish this um, this evening with the poem of um, Maya Angelou. Okay. Shall I go? Yes, please, Kelly. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in tide. Living behind nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I'm the dream of the, and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. We rise. We rise. rise, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much um, for this you. excellent moment we spent together. Uh, I'm really very touched. Um, from all we discussed, I think you can <laughs> you can see it now. Uh, thank you so much, and I hope to see you soon. And let's let's keep the fight. Okay. Thank you, thank you thank for you. your beautiful faces there. Hope to yeah, hug you thank soon. You. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I love you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank all. you. Have a lovely Thanks. evening, afternoon, whatever you are. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.